Hey guys, welcome back to the Motion Raceworks YouTube channel. Today, I want to put a focus and a spotlight on a new product we developed. It is a uh, manual master cylinder brake kit for a uh, round body as they'd be known, 94 to 04 S10 Blazer, Sonoma, Jimmy, uh, whatever you wanna call them. This is a really cool kit because it allows you to get rid of that big bulky master cylinder and uh, brake booster, which on an LS and a lot of other V8 platforms will actually hang over and cause issues with valve covers and just clearance issues in general. So also if you're putting race brakes on like we are on this uh, Extreme Blazer uh, that we have a build series going for and we'll be ramping up here very shortly, you'll want the ma manual master cylinder a lot of times because on uh, depending on how the engine's built and everything, uh, you might not have enough vacuum or whatever to power the brakes with a uh, booster master combo. Today we will be using our uh, brake kit. It comes with a CNC plate, a new push rod, uh, very important, with a uh, heim on it. And then we'll be using a strange master cylinder, but these, this is a dual master cylinder, uh, TBM, which we'll actually end up replacing this with a TBM one because we have TBM brakes on it, uses the same pattern. Uh, Willwood has the same style and there's just various other ones. And uh, there are different bore sizes, which we will cover in another video. Uh, but I wanted to show you the two products that we're gonna be using. So when we design one of these manual master kits, we do more than just take the bolt pattern off the firewall and uh, just make everything fit. And sometimes, like in this case, we actually have to cut out a little bit extra hole. Uh, we could have easily dropped things down so it just bolts right in place and uh, there's no modification required. But there's definitely some engineering that needs to be accounted for and used so that you have pro proper pressure and uh, ratio on the pedal. So for that reason, that's why we made actually a custom push rod for this particular setup. And that's why we position a master cylinder with this setup. When we first uh, released this product, we had a lot of people asking us to release it. We released it and they're like, hey, you designed the product wrong. It doesn't um, hit the hole, the factory hole on, on the firewall. And we're like, no, it actually is this way for a reason. So I'll dig in right now and I'll show you why. So the reason why we're moving this mounting point up, which will also move the mounting point up on the pedal is because a power brake system typically wants like four to one pedal ratio. And that's where most of the factory cars put it. There's a cool little diagram that I'll put up on the screen right now, and then I'll put a link to it below. And it kind of shows you how to metal, measure pedal ratio. If you look at this diagram, you can kind of see visually, four to one is what you want for a power um, brake system. But on a manual master, you're gonna want anywhere between five to one and seven to one. So that's gonna obviously require us to move it further up the pedal, which is why um, you know, sometimes the, the push rod doesn't land exactly where it does from the factory, especially in this case. So you can see the factory hole is, I mean, it's going to land right in the middle of that, the, the brake push rod is. And if you look through there, you can see that directly in line with that is the, um, the connection where the factory brake pedal was. If you look at ours, you can see that it's moved up significantly higher. And uh, that's because we're gonna attach the push rod higher up on the, on the pedal than it was previously. So there is a little bit of modification. You can understand why when somebody gets this kit and goes to bolt it on, they're a little surprised that there's nowhere for the push rod to go through. So a uh, little bit of hole drilling is required, but that allows us to create a, uh, everything the way it needs to be so that you get a uh, proper you know, pedal and proper pressure to run your brakes. We're gonna go ahead and stick that right back up there and uh, trace here. Kind of a circular pattern. And then uh, just kind of estimate, we're gonna use a bigger hole saw than a hole is, but uh, if we can kind of estimate the center, you can measure it if you wanna get really technical, but we'll use a, a hole saw that's a little bigger and it's gonna wobble. And having it a little bit bigger isn't gonna cause any issues, so. Now we got that marked, we can drill a pilot hole and we'll come back with a hole saw and finish it off. All right, so I always like to drill a little pilot hole. Uh, those, the uh, hole saws tend to get a little bit of a wobble to them, so I like to get this pilot hole right first. 
like our problem just gets exponentially worse. All right, so now we're gonna come back with the, uh, we used an inch and three quarter. Uh, I think an inch and five eighths would work, but I couldn't find one. Again, we have a lot of room for error here, so it doesn't really have to be the exact size of what it is. And since we're only cutting about half of a hole, um, I'm gonna kind of take it slow here, just so we can uh, just get a good clean cut. There you have it. All right, guys, this is very important. Uh, I'm actually flashing back, but you want to make sure before you install this in the vehicle, because you don't want to install it and then uninstall it, to bench bleed the master cylinder. If you ever started with a dry master cylinder, what you want to do is put it in a vise, fill it full of fluid, and take that uh, push rod and push it in there until fluid comes out of the ports on it. So put a garbage can next to the, to the vise and just basically just cycle it a bunch of times till fluid comes out. The worst thing you can do that'll make give you so many headaches is build all your lines and then try and bleed a dry master cylinder plus a dry system. You want the master cylinder to at least be primed with fluid before you start uh, bleeding the whole system. Of course they make those you know nice nifty uh, mighty vac things and all that stuff but definitely uh, something you want to do is bench bleed a master cylinder. I've done this like 10 times where I put it on a car, forgot to bench bleed it, and then you're sitting there just fighting yourself. And then you're cracking lines, and then you're spewing fluid all over your done engine bay because it's the last thing you do. It's just a mess. Just to do that right now before you mount the master cylinder. Okay, so now's a good time to have a buddy around to help you out because we're gonna bolt this thing right to the firewall here. So you'll need a buddy on the backside to get the nuts started. And then uh, put the bottom holes in and we can tighten all four up. All right, we got it all mounted. Nice thing is with the ratio needing to move it up, it actually makes more clearance for your engine. On this LS engine, we don't really have an issue, but some en engines, depending on where they sit, you might still have an issue. So we're gonna move on into the inside and I'm gonna show you why we had to make a custom push rod and show you how to install it on that portion of things. And uh, then we'll be done. All right. so. Here we have our custom push rod that's included in the kit, uh, a rod end and then uh, a locking nut. This keeps the, uh, when we're all done, we'll tighten that down and that'll keep the heim joint from loosening or tightening once it's in the spot. And what we're gonna do now is mark and then drill where the 3 8 bolt goes through the pedal here. Now the reason we made a custom push rod uh, for this application and many of our other master cylinder applications is a, you don't want to have this too far up here, or you don't want to have it to where it doesn't reach at all. And knowing that we're trying to land this on a proper spot to create the proper ratio on the pedal uh, just required it. So there is a rubber um, ring that is included in your master cylinder kit. That's something you do not want to lose, and it will go right here, but do not put that on here at this stage in the game because what it does is when you push that into the back of the master cylinder it basically locks it completely up and you can no longer pull the push rod out or it's very 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 difficult and it's not something you want to do underneath the dash so for this part while we're measuring and mocking things up you'll want to go ahead and leave that off and uh, so we'll go ahead and get this up one important thing to note is so this will fit, fit right back into uh, there's a little counter bore in the back of the master cylinder, it's gonna fit right in there. So after we put it in there, when we're marking it, you wanna keep this thing, you know, assuming your vehicle's level and not uh, back in six foot in the air, you wanna have this pedal basically level with the frame rail or the ground, whatever uh, you wanna reference it off of. You don't wanna have it like this. Um, some guys will do that just to cheat it and get it in a hole that's already in the master cylinder. Um, you're gonna create a binding situation here and also ruin the ratio and you don't want to have it like that you want to have it level and that's going to allow for the proper uh, pedal ratio so that you're not disturbing that and you're not creating any binding situations so as far as the pedal height goes you can also fine-tune adjust that once you get everything set um, within reason um, you can turn this in a little further or turn it out a little further 
and that'll allow, you know, depending on the height and everything, but it's not gonna make huge, huge changes to it, uh, but it will allow a little bit of change to the pedal height. So we're gonna go ahead and slide this in here. A lot of this is blind as most stuff underneath the dash is. And uh, we're gonna kind of just verify that it's, that everything is uh, parallel. And then after that, what we're gonna do is, you can either poke a dot right in the center or you can kind of trace the outside and then get the, the center off of that later. So, looks like we're right there. So we're gonna try and trace as much of that time joint as we can. And that'll kind of give us the outside and then we'll mark the center because there's something blocking it from there. So that was the reason why you wanted to leave that out. In some vehicles, you can actually drill the pedal while it's in the car, and an S10 doesn't look like it's gonna be that way. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the pedal out and drill it on the stand, which even if you can't get it out, these things are made of super hard steel, so you're gonna be glad you pulled it out in almost every instance. Okay, so we got the bolt out. Luckily, it's not a bolt and a nut. If you look around the back side of here, there's a hole, and that's a 19 millimeter bolt and uh, as soon as you loosen it it just comes out so if you guys are wondering you just need to get to that side so i think you can do it with the dash in the car it's obviously a lot more difficult otherwise s10 dashes come out so easily it's it's unbelievable so now that we got this out we can uh, mark and drill this thing on a drill press it'll take a few minutes rather than fighting it underneath forever and uh, we'll put it back in we just traced the outline of it because we couldn't get a sharpie down the middle. You want to make sure you don't push this up to where um, that ledge is hanging up there. So since we have some adjustment, we'll just kind of back it off a little bit, get it centered in there, mark it with a sharpie. Wow, I'm really struggling. Back it up, mark it with a sharpie right in the middle, and then uh, we'll go ahead and drill a uh, 3 8 bolt hole or slightly larger right there. You can obviously do this part with a hand drill, but since we got a drill press, we're just gonna go ahead and use a drill press. Okay. You'll notice I always use a pilot drill before I hit something with a big drill, because it's a lot harder to hit the center with a big drill because the, the point is so broad. So all you really need, if you've never seen this trick, um, your pilot hole doesn't have to be very big. You just kind of want it to be bigger than the crossover between where those two go. That way the, the center of this can just kind of find a home on its way through. So a lot of people try to put a big pilot hole in there, kind of use whatever you have and whatever's sharp and we'll get that landed right where it needs to be so that this can follow along the same path. So now we got a three eighths hole. That's gonna go right through it. We're gonna put a uh, lock nut on the back. And uh, it's actually easier to go ahead and tighten all this up now. And then uh, you can always swing the pedal out, put that and put it back in in the car. So I'll go ahead and tighten this up and we'll toss it back in the car. Truck. So you can see like, once you put this in there, you can pull the pedal back and slide that in there so it's easier than trying to tighten and put the bolt through while it's in the car especially if you already have everything out so now we'll put this bolt in and uh get it tightened up there we go all right guys so everything's all tightened up um because we have a six to one ratio, that little adjuster, uh, that heim joint that's on the end or rod end, if you will, um, an eighth of an inch of adjustment on that makes about an inch to an inch and a quarter travel on the actual pedal height here. So you'll see this one sitting a little high. It's because I need to adjust it down. Um, so just pay attention to that because a six to one ratio, a small adjustment will move the pedal a long way. So that gives you a, a little bit of ability as a driver to adjust pedal length um, to what's comfortable. And then also depending on what gas pedal you're using and stuff like that, you can adjust it 
Of course, there's only so much adjustment because we have to have enough engagement in a rod and without having it too, you know, short to where it's flimsy. Uh, but just know that. And then what you'll want to do is set that uh, that lock nut on the actual rod end itself uh, that's on the thread of the shaft there. Make sure you put that on there. Otherwise, it can turn in and turn out. And when you're going on the track, it can come undone. And that's ugly. Finally, the last thing. So now that everything else is set how you want it, you'll want to grab this little rubber um, O-ring gasket thing that comes in the uh, master cylinder kit and put it on the push rod. And what that's going to do is trap this inside of the bore so that the pedal can't be pulled out and that push rod can't come out and get wedged somewhere. You know, that's an ugly situation, so it just kind of traps it in there. Um, just know that when you do that, it's almost impossible to get this push rod back out. But since everything is done and how you want it, um, you can go ahead and do that now. And uh, you'll be all set with your S10 manual master brake system. I hope this got helped clear up some issues, uh, gave you some pointers. Hopefully it saved you some time on your install as far as like the uh, bench bleeding and how to pull it out and everything. Um, and yeah, hope you enjoy your Motion Raceworks Manual Master Cylinder Kit for a second gen S10. Thanks for tuning in guys. I hope this was helpful for you. Whether you're doing it in an S10 or a Fox body or whatever car, uh, I think there's a lot of tips so you could share this with a friend. If you guys have any other ideas for other installs that you would like to see, we would definitely like to accommodate that if at all possible. That's why we build these R&D vehicles so we can get content to show you guys and explain and instruct. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in.